Hello there folks, Joe Wazoo here. In today's video, uh, we're going to set up a, kind of a method to extract a program from HMI and more importantly, set up a database to go through one of my virtual classes. And what I'm talking about here is I've got a stack of HMIs that I use in my classes uh, when I teach in front of people and uh, that's what the students use and works great. But uh, when I'm uh, confined to the office, uh, I put these also connected to the internet and I have a number of HMIs that are connected all the time that you can uh, download to and interact with. But there's a couple of settings that you got to make sure match in order for you to be able to download to the screen and for you to see the web page. My router at the office is set up to take care of all this. So you kind of got to follow some rules. So I've got here on the page right here is a spreadsheet that I send out to all my students that attend a virtual class. And if you look here, uh, I've got a stack right here called the internet column. And these are the public IP addresses of most of the HMIs that I have here on my desk. And then right here is a stack of IP addresses that are local to my network here at the office. So the internet one here, if you look here, team, there's a number 47.185.227.191. And then there's a different colon number depending on what particular HMI you want to look at. So for instance, if I go over to my browser and if I put in the number 47.185.227.191.91, I will get to this HMI that's right here. So this one's using port 91 for the web page. And it's using, if I go back to this spreadsheet, uh, it's using port 91 for the web page, which is right here. This column right here is what I'm talking about for the web page. And then this uh, column right here, I should just start over here. This column right here is the download port number. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, let's say, for instance, I want to extract this program from this remote HMI to build a database. So I'm going to go ahead and start up Crimson 3.1. Give it a second here to load. And let me make this smaller so it fits into my window here. Uh, right there. There we go. Okay. Now, just so you know, I'm using uh, version help and about. I'm currently running build 3125.003, which is current as of today, 12-13-2021. So uh, I want to see if I can extract from this remote HMI. So I'm going to, uh, and these are all going to be graphite screens, but to prove my point, I'm going to leave this looking at something else. Here I got a CR3K I must have been tinkering with. It's a 10-inch screen. No big deal. Uh, I'm going to go here to the Ethernet tab. I'm going to leave this as DHCP because that's what my office router has to assign IP addresses to these units. If I sit it, if I put it as a fixed IP, my office router doesn't like that. So I leave it there. But if I go to the download tab here, here's where things get a little bit special. On the download tab, right here where it says enabled, I want to extract what I think. I want to extract this HMI number 91, this one right here. So it says right here to use port number 791. So in Crimson, right here, I'm going to change the default, which is 789. I'm going to change this to 791. Boom. And then if I go back to the Excel spreadsheet, right here, team, is the public IP address of my router. So in Crimson, I'm going to go down here and where it says auto local name right here, I'm going to hit the pull down and select manual. And I'm going to put in that number right here, which I believe is 47.185.227.191. Let me double check. I'm going to go over here. 47.185.227.191. That's correct. And once again, I need to make sure that this port number here is also the same as this port, 791. So I'm going to change this to 791. Okay. All right. So this looks good. Now I want to see if I can extract this program from that particular HMI. So I'm going to go to the link pull down and I'm going to come down to the word options. 
And I'm going to use the TCP IP connection right here. I'm going to use TCP IP connection. So that looks good. I'll click the OK button. I'm going to go link and extract. And let's see what it does. First off, it asks, do you want to save this? I'm going to say no to this. So I'll tell Crimson no. And then it should go out to the Internet. And look at here. It went out and got that program. At least I think it did. And let me go ahead and save this to somewhere we can find it, just so we can verify. So I'll go ahead and put this <clears throat> in the same directory of these classes I'm playing with here. Uh, right here. And I'm going to call this one extracted, oops, extracted, underscore G09. These are all uh, graphite 09, underscore 91. I'm picking on number 91 because that's the screen number of this. So extracted G09, number 91. I'm going to go ahead and click the Save button. Let's see what it does here. Okay. Well, I got something. Uh, I can see over here in communications, I apparently have a bunch of things here. Data tags. Okay. Ah, look at here. Here is that default program that's currently running on that screen right there. That's pretty sweet. Uh, got programs. Okay. So let me prove a point to you here. Now that I've, I think that I've extracted the program, let me go address one more thing. So over here in the web server section, <clears throat> Every one of my screens has a certain port number assigned to the web page. So you have uh, a port number assigned to download to it, which is usually a 700 series, 791, 792, 793, so forth. And then they all have a web page attached to them. Port 91, 92, 93, 94. Uh, let me go over here to this sheet right here, this particular page again. Uh, you can see here this column right here. Oh, this is a typo. This one should be 195. Let me fix that right now. That's the typo yeah anyway so uh 91 92 now all these numbers these are the port numbers for the web page okay and to prove that point if i go back to the web browser you can see right here look there's the public ip address 47 185 227.191 colon number 91 should get you here you should be able to open this up on your web browser that number write it down and put it into a web browser, and you should be able to click Remote View, and you'll see the screen. Now, what I'm going to do to prove that I can download to the screen is you see how it says number 91 here? It says number 91 here, and uh, I think it also does it one more place. Let me go back to here. Oh, right here, 91. It'll show it here, here, and also right here. So, in Crimson, just for testing, I'm going to put in... A different name here. I'll put in Wazoo, for instance. Wazoo's uh, space 91. We'll do that like that. And I'll go ahead and do the same. I'm going to copy this. Boom. Right click, copy. Highlight, control V, paste right there. Oh, hold on here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here as well. Okay. So I've got those all set up. Now, I want to see if I can download this configuration to the HMI with these changes. So I always do this team. I always save the file. So I'm going to save it there. Notice the name of here is extracted. Uh, that's what I called it before. Maybe I'll save it as a different name. File, save as. And of course, Crimson always remembers where you were last. So let me go put it where I um, put this thing. I did, that didn't make sense. It remembered something. But all right. So uh, extracted. There is the program. Now I'm going to give this one a little different date. I'm going to give it a different name. Uh, changed uh, web name, for instance. That's all I did. So when I hit save, remember this pop-up comes up? I always say this, team. You always want to click no to this. You're not going to hurt anything if you click yes, but 99% uh, of the time, feel free to click no. There's no reason to create a new database identifier. If you download a new one and click yes to this, and if you're making changes to an existing Redline project, which most of our customers are doing, what happens is you'll delete all the retentive tags, all the saved set points, recipes. Uh, it's going to think it's a whole new program. It's going to delete all the data log files, start new. So click no to that. So there it is. I'm going to try to download to the screen. So I'll go to link options. Make sure I'm still using the TCP IP. That's correct. And if I hit link send, let's see what it does.
Yeah, patience. Patience. I guarantee it won't take this long every time. It's just whatever I'm doing here. Okay, so I've downloaded that to it. Now, look, here I am back at the web page. Here's 91. Ah, why is that thing there? 91 there and 91 here. I'm going to hit the refresh button right here. And let's see what it does. One, two, three, boom. It should go out. Yeah, maybe refresh. Why are you not refreshing here, buddy? No, I'm still on the internet. Did I change anything here? Nope. 91, 91. That looks good. Didn't change anything there. That looks good. All right. Let's see what happened to my 91 here. Mm -hmm. May reload again. Ah, there we go. Who knows? So I finally got to reload. Look, it says Wazoo's 91, Wazoo's 91, and here. So that means I was able to download to it, so it looks good. So going forward, I have now a perfect base for a, a program to make changes to, to to interact with. So I'm going to make a series of videos now going forward that will cover what I do in a regular virtual class. But this is the first video to set up your configuration. So, again, I've got... Uh, Right now, I've only got uh, screens 91, 92, 93, uh, I think 95, yeah, and a couple others. But anyway, uh, you can see that based on what tab is open up here, these are the ones that are currently connected to this unit. So uh, here's number 98. So I've got number 91, 92, 93, 95. This one is number 98. And then I have a screen that's at port number 97 that acts as our simulator here in this case. So this is the guy that, uh, I don't know why it does this method not allowed, but if it refreshes, it should refresh. Uh, that unit there is the one we use for simulator. I don't understand why, that, there it goes. Yep. All right, so that's the first video. Um, look for a series of other things coming out here, team, that'll cover more in detail. But if you want to interact with the other screens, you just have to change this number here to a 792 or 793, 794, so forth, uh, to get to those screens. But 791 is currently plugged in, and we're interacting with that. Look for more videos to come out that follow what I teach in the virtual class from this point going forward. This is just video number one. Thanks. Bye.